Ford is driving on a rocky road, from production halts to a cost disadvantage of seven to eight billion dollars. Now the automaker continues on its route towards the EV revolution, but does Ford have the fuel to make it through to its EV goals? Here to discuss this and more is Garrett Nelson, CFRA VP and equity analyst, along with Yahoo Finance's own Price Subramanian. Thank you for joining me, Garrett. Um, so we know you have a buy rating on Ford, a 12-month price target of $17. It does have a lot of pros going for it. Valuation, demand, reinstated its dividends. But when you look at things like cost, when you look at things like the operational issues, what is going to get it to that price target? Yeah, thanks for having me. You know, Ford has quietly become the second best-selling U.S. EV manufacturer. They're a distant second to Tesla, but still... They've done a lot better than many of their peers. And so, you know, we think that, you know, that's a big part of the growth story going forward. Um, we know the F-150 Lightning uh, electric pickup is available. The reservation count is north of 200,000 units for that vehicle. And they've had a lot of success with the Mustang Mach-E and uh, other EVs that, that they've put out. So, um but still, there's a lot of work to be done. As you noted, you know, Jim Farley took the CEO reins uh, almost two and a half years ago. And I think there's some frustration uh, that they're not really turning the corner as fast as a lot of investors would like. They did double their dividend last year. Um, the stock is yielding, uh, you know, roughly 6% here on that dividend. But um, I think there's still a lot of work to be done. You know, when you look at uh, Ford's global um, footprint and in, in their employee count, um, we think there's still a lot of room for improvement. And so, you know, Farley really has his work cut out for him still. Hey, Garrett. So, you know, Ford last two quarters were a little sort of disappointing for investors. Has some issues here with uh, the EV transformation. They're really going hard with the splitting of the company up. You know, the, the, the Ford Lightning with some issues with the batteries and, and they're all ongoing recall issues with other vehicles. Is the transformation sort of stalling there for the company? Is it more of a short-term thing, term thing, or are there long-term issues here? Yeah, we think it's more of a short-term thing. You know, Ford's not the only one that's had battery issues. In fact, we put out a report a couple weeks ago, you know, looking at the really frustratingly slow pace of uh, uh, EV production ramp-up of the likes of, you know, General Motors has had problems with their battery for the Bolt. Now Ford's having problems uh, with, the, with the F-150 Lightning. Um, but you look at some of the smaller EV manufacturers like Lucid and Rivian, you know, their production ramp ups have been very disappointing. And so, you know, we think it's it's more of a near term problem. But, you know, really the only automaker, in our view, in the U.S. that has mastered, uh, you know, the, the mass market uh, EV production is, is Tesla, really. Um, they really have it down to a science. And it's going to be, we think, a bumpy road for a lot of the traditional automakers who, of course, you know, have been producing internal combustion engine vehicles for, for many, many decades. But, um, you know, EVs, that's a whole new ball game. And so there's a lot of adjustments. There's going to be a lot of growing pains, we think. You mentioned Jim Farley on the job for about two and a half years now in the CEO seat. You know, he's an operator. He's a car guy. Wall Street applauded his, his sort of promotion to the CEO role. Is he still the right guy for the job, uh, given what Ford is doing? This, this is a big transformation and a huge turn for the business. I think you hit the nail on the head. I mean, that's the question everyone is asking. There's been a lot of frustration. The stock price, you know, after a, a big run up, um, you know, really in the year or so after he 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 took the reins, um, has really stalled. You know, part of it was because Ford's production and earnings were rebounding from the depths of COVID in 2020. But you know, now is really, um, you know, he's going to really have to show. Uh, some improvement here. Um, you know, part of the plan is to separate the electric business from the internal combustion engine vehicle business. We do think they're, you know, they're 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 following the right strategy by taking a more balanced approach towards EV growth, and really focusing on building excitement uh, surrounding individual EV models as opposed to setting a date in the future, which you know, in which they're going to be all electric. We think the balanced approach is the right one. Um, you know, just given the fact that EVs still accounted for less than 6% of all U.S. new vehicle sales last year. Uh, clearly, EVs are the future of the industry, but, you know, growth is going to take several years. 
And as we look at Europe, because they did set targets there in terms of when they want to be all electric, they've also announced about 3,000 job cuts. They're really trying to streamline some of the, the range of the products they have out there as well. What else do you think is going to make Ford more competitive in the EV space? Yeah, it's really just you know building excitement surrounding individual models. You know they want to they want to be able to offer you know electric versions of certain models such as the Bronco um, hybrid version and then all gas version. So you know we think you know giving consumers those kinds of choices as far as what they want to what they want to purchase um, is is really going to be beneficial to them. So you know but you know he took over at a time where we felt there was a lot of low hanging fruit in terms of operational improvement that they could make. Um, you know, he's, he's made some progress, but I, don't, I think a lot of investors didn't have an appreciation for how difficult, you know, what a massive global footprint that Ford has. And, uh, you know, really improvement is, is going to be have to, is, is going to have to be made, you know, across all geographies. And, and so, you know, I think, you know, after two and a half years, a lot of investors are thinking, you know, they would be farther along. So, Really, you know, there's 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 a lot of pressure on on Farley, and and, and he's going to really have to show uh, some execution here in the coming quarters.